Hello everyone, Scotia here with the start of a new series on this channel that I'm calling In the Defense Of, a show where I look at some less than popular fighting game characters and try my best to explain why I think they deserve more love. For the first episode of this new series, I'm going to be talking about one of the more forgotten members of the Street Fighter 3 roster, the Cannonball Kid in Next Generation Shodokan, Sean Matsuda. <laughs> There's many things I like about Sean, such as his design, his playstyle and his character. I'll get into these a little later, but unfortunately this video has to start with why Sean is an unpopular character, and that means looking into the myriad of problems that have plagued him for 24 years. So why don't people care for Sean? Well, to put it simply, it's the fact that no one respects him. Sean is not as popular as characters as, say, Sakura or Ibuki, but I wouldn't say he's as unpopular as characters like Remy or Rufus. To me, Sean exists in this purgatory of popularity where he's neither popular nor unpopular. And in fact, I bet that most people don't even know Sean exists, or at least they don't know he was once a playable character long before his sister was. And to be fair, who can blame them? Capcom have made no attempt to legitimise Sean as a character that people should care about. If Capcom don't respect the character, why should the fans? Well, Capcom doesn't respect Sean, so the fans don't either. To go into this point further, I need to compare Sean to a similar character who debuted the same year as him. Shingo Yubuki is a character who debuted in The King of Fighters 97, the same year that Sean debuted in Street Fighter 3 New Generation. They're two very similar characters who share a particular trope. They're both fans of a major character in their respective series and copy their movesets. For Sean, it's Ken Masters. For Shingo, it's KOF hero Kiyo Kusanagi. The main difference between these two is how they're tried by their creators. SNK respects Shingo, Capcom does not respect Sean. This becomes apparent from the first part of their backstories. Shingo idolises Kyo in his fighting style after his many KOF tournament wins. Sean idolises Ken in his fighting style after many US tournament wins. When Shingo approaches Kyo, Kyo agrees to take him on as an apprentice but demands free food in exchange. When Sean approaches Ken, Ken tells Sean to go away, eventually tricking him into accepting a foolish job he can't win, finding and beating Ryu, just to get rid of him. Immediately Sean is not respected by his idol. Shingo isn't either, but Kyo at least agrees to humour him, if only for his own benefit. Shingo enters the 97 KOF tournament but is eliminated. Sean manages to find Ryu but can't beat him. What happens after that is where things differ between the two. Let's look at the two's endings to compare how their debut game treats them.
you don't need me to tell you how different these two games treat them. SNK knows Shingo can never be on Kyo's level, but they still let Kyo show Shingo respect for how far he's come as a fighter. Sean meanwhile actually manages to find Ryu, something Ken thought would be impossible for Sean to do, but is obviously unable to beat someone who's several skill levels above him. Capcom knows Sean is not Ryu's skill level and treats him like a joke for it, having him be beaten by a single of Ryu's Hadoukens. There's clearly no respect for Sean here. Capcom treats him like a joke, so the players treat him like a joke. I've gotten into so many arguments with people over the years whenever I felt like they were disrespecting Sean. I liked him, so I took it personally when people didn't like him. It wasn't until a couple years ago that I realised that people are actually right not to respect Sean. Capcom never gave people a reason to respect him. Laura's introduction in Street Fighter 5 gave Capcom a chance to give Sean some dignity in his cameo appearance in the game's story. Sean was obviously a novice in the Shotokan style, but maybe he'll be at least a little bit adept in his own family's fighting style. Just stay back. This monster is too much for you to handle. Oh. I'm willing to look past Street Fighter V's mistreatment of Sean due to him not really having started his journey as a fighter yet at that point in the timeline, but his role in that game gives me little hope that Capcom will ever treat him with any shred of respect, let alone the respect I feel he deserves. Of course, this is also ignoring the horrible treatment Sean received in Street Fighter III Third Strike, the follow up to New Generation Second Impact, where Sean's moveset and balance were completely gutted as both a means to save memory and honour the role of a joke fighter that Capcom had decided to give him. Compare him to Shingo again, where his next game, ignoring KF98 which has no story, had Shingo in the main hero team of KF99 where he, along with new protagonist K-Dash, won the tournament and defeated Chrysalid. What was Sean doing in his next game? Losing to a random no-name fighter in the preliminaries of his first tournament. Sean was the guy who managed to find Ryu on his own, something characters spent entire games trying and failing to do. Again, Capcom clearly have no respect for Sean, so why should people like him? With so many negatives behind Sean, and most of them not being his fault, I really want to talk about Sean's positives. Why do I like him so much? Well, as I said at the start of the video, you can break it down into his design, his playstyle and his character. Sean's design just pops for me. Yellow is my favourite colour anyway, so I was immediately drawn to him, but his dark skin tone complements the vibrant pop the yellow gear gives him. Sean stands out in a sea of karate geese, and love him or hate him, you can't deny that visually Sean is one of the more interesting of the Shotokans. Another thing I like about Sean is his gameplay. If you're familiar with this channel, you'll know by now that I am not a gameplay focused guy when it comes to fighters, my focus is mainly on the story and characters. That being said, I main Sean in Third Strike because he's really fucking fun to play. As I said earlier, tier list wise he's a complete joke in Third Strike, but that doesn't matter to me really, I just enjoy playing as him, which I think is the number one thing when it comes to playing a fighting game, and Sean fits my playstyle perfectly. Compared to the other Shotokan fighters in Street Fighter, it can't be overstated just how refreshing of a take on the Shoto formula Sean is, with it even being possible to make the case that he's not really a Shoto. As a character and as a moveset, Sean fits perfectly with the overall taking old concepts and remixing them vibe Street Fighter 3 as well as the late 90s in general had. Lastly, I enjoy his character. If you haven't checked him out yet, Digi Valentine put it best in his video he made on Sean years ago. Sean is a great representation of the fighting game community as a whole, and the passion that comes into playing with people across the world. No matter how many losses he takes, no matter how many times he's utterly defeated by his opponent, Sean gets back up, just like the people in the FGC who come back for every fighting game tournament every year. The FGC wants to fight the best of the best and grow as fighters, just like Sean. He represents the path of a fighter just as much as Ryu or Daigo or anyone else, real or fictional. I find Sean to be an incredibly endearing character because of his willingness to never give up despite his flaws working against him. Sean knows he sucks, he hates it when you compare him to Dan because he knows deep down he's as bad as Dan is, though Sean has the excuse of being a fighter in training, but he has the passion and drive to keep chasing his goal no matter what. And it's Sean's youth and recklessness that often causes his own downfall. His inability to read the situation correctly before rushing headfirst in, as well as his loose and inaccurate attempts to copy another fighting style, are all the telltale signs of a fighter in training, but it's also the sign of someone with so much room to grow. Don't forget, we've only ever seen Sean as a fighter with no master. In Street Fighter 3, Sean is someone who relies on the lessons from his family Jiu Jitsu style, combined with his observations from Ken's matches. It's only in Ken's third strike ending that we finally see Ken accept Sean as his student. Quite frankly, the fact Sean is able to do anything even close to remotely well is incredible and shows his skill and passion for fighting. Yes, Sean can only throw a Hudoken at the cost of a super meter, but think about it, he learned to do Hudoken by simply watching someone do one on television. And yeah, other characters like Sakura have shown to be able to do that and more with no official training, but I still think Sean shows a crazy amount of potential. 
with Sean the sky's the limit, but we just need Capcom to stop treating him as such a joke, and to move the series past Third Strike which I'm still waiting for. I feel like Sean's chances to be in Street Fighter 6 are good. He's one of the few characters from the 2D era of Street Fighter to not return in the playable sense, his upcoming role in Street Fighter 3 has already been established, and there's always a chance Street Fighter 6 moves past 3 in the timeline. If it does happen and Sean does return, I hope Capcom are willing to do the mature thing and treat Sean with the respect previous developers within the company never gave him. While Dan will always suffer the fate of a joke character, it's not fair to cut Sean off with the knees when he's so young and has so much potential to grow even higher and higher. Despite going through his negatives, I still love Sean despite his flaws. In fact, I feel like in order to truly appreciate him, I have to acknowledge the areas where he can improve, and he can improve a lot. I want the best for Sean, and until Capcom show that they're willing to move on in both the timeline and maturity, we're sadly stuck with where we are now, a character left in the shadows who deserves so, so much more. Thanks for watching the video. Let me know what you think of Sean and if you agree or disagree with my thoughts on the character. I'm always interested in hearing other people's views. Also let me know as well if you like the series. There's definitely a lot of characters that I could talk about who could deserve the spotlight for once. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later. We await your return, warrior.